like I would regular and that will automatically share the screen, whatever I have up here. So you'll need to, anybody that's on for career development will be starting shortly. So you'll come here uh -huh. and you will put in whatever to start, bring up whatever you want to bring up. Okay. And then you go back here. I just want to go into my email and I'll do the slideshow from there. And then uh, you'll come down here to church. So basically, just minimize for a second. Do you know what you want to bring up? Yeah, I just want to go into my email. Gmail. And then just minimize if you're already saved. Sorry, Oh, oh, I just don't think he's here today. He's here. There's supposed to be something oh, yeah. today at lunch. Oh, yeah. Wasn't there? Wasn't yeah. he not going to show something? Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to look at the calendar. I really don't know. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. 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 I'm going now. Hold on. Sorry, speaking. Sorry, hold on. I need to laugh. is what it's originally set up for. Okay, so the, the agents that are newer or the top agents in the company that are making all the money, they're the ones that get the help around here, but not no. the ones that are- No, Courtney, it's a class. You're welcome no. to sit down in a class. Yeah. I don't like the so negativity. No, I don't. Oh my gosh, we would hate to be negative and honest, wouldn't we? Cool. Can we have a conversation after we're finished here? Can I get this class Absolutely. launched? Thank you. Yeah, about time. You are so welcome. I don't even think I'm going to. Well, I would just like to be able to see To follow that. along. Yeah. I know. I'm wondering. I don't know. So so this, this is not the time or place. Someone. Just wait one second really? and I will meet with you. Please. Please. I'm asking you, please. I don't know if we lost the meeting. That's oh, there's Keisha on there. Two, three. There we go. <laughs> I'll just go right in your office. For recording. <laughs> Let me ask Keisha if she can see. Here, actually, I can do it. Here. Do you want my laptop? I brought my laptop. Because that's how can I see me. You see the screen that I need. I'll figure it out. Look at you. He's ready. Yes, I can see. She can see. Oh, good. Thanks, Keisha. I'll be right. We'll be right ready to get started here shortly. I'll just fill her credit card. Do you want my credit card? I think so. Can I do it after this thing? Okay, I'm good. I had to grab Okay, thank you, dear. Okay, thank you, dear. Hey guys, we're going to start in like five minutes. I just have to run with the rest of you. Okay. 
she was like, she's going to wipe my house. Oh, this is being recorded. Pamela, did you grab all those forms? I have some. Can you help? Oh, I can take a Mary. Yes. Apologize. Okay, so everybody, while we're getting started, I want everybody, I met several of you yesterday, or I already know you, but what I'd like you to go to is just start with one, go your way around, tell me your name, and tell me something non real estate that would be interesting for me to know about you. Like Um, 
I am a drone pilot and geographer. That's cool. So I do a lot of uh, you know, real estate shoots and virtual tours and all that fun stuff. Very cool. I'm trying to pick up out of my listings and okay. do things of that nature. Okay. So I, I'm going to be applying along today to figure out what I want to do. Sounds good. Sounds good. How am I supposed to get complete with a drone? I don't know. He said the word Mike. No. Okay. Uh, my name is Lucas. Uh, uh, something about me is I had a MMA career for a little bit under a decade. I was a professional for about four years. And you guys have got a lot to compete with. Yeah. You should have gone first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't competed in like two years because I have a two year old child. Wow, very cool. Okay, Craig, can you, can you compete? Down? I can try. All right, let's hear it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm Craig Blesso. Okay. Uh, I just got licensed back in April. I'm really excited and happy to be here. Uh, something about me, let's see. Um, uh, oh, uh, the year after I graduated from college, um, I spent that year uh, in Brazil teaching children uh, how to speak English. Oh my oh, God. You got a great conversation. Oh, I got one already. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Sorry, Greg. What part of Brazil? What part of Brazil? Sao Paulo. Yeah, I, I visited Sao Paulo a few years back. Okay, that was it. Yeah. Very awesome. good. All right, Caitlin, let's hear it. My name is Caitlin Walker. Um, I you. have a Caitlin Walker. I have a co op with Mary right now. So she does. It's been awesome. <laughs> um, interesting fact about me is the reason why I got my real estate license. Um, I took a solo trip to Los Angeles. And I got an Uber from the airport to my Airbnb in Mar Vista, which is a little neighborhood off the beach. Okay. And I didn't rent a car. So I literally just walked and toured around this whole neighborhood for like a week by myself. And um, all of the houses in Mar Vista are different. And it like ignited something new, but like it came back. It's literally every dime that I had when I came back, I spent on how much real estate sold because. I could just think about how much I wanted to see the inside of the houses. And it was like, it just set off the fire. So, very good. I mean, yeah, not I'm as cool as it. Very good. My name is Stacy Robinson. Um, I've had my license since November of 2019. And an interesting fact about me is I'm a proud man of the four. There you go. Wow, oh, my mom's name is Stacy Robinson. No! Wow! <laughs> My name is Keisha. I am. Um, I got my license in June of this year, and I work for two um, two judges, two Franklin County judges, and we're in trial now. But I'm still attending this class. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, um, I'm Mary Blackstone. Um, I'm a realtor. I have my own company. Interesting facts about me. Um, I have a blue eye and green eye. I was born that way. Depends on what I wear. If you notice it. Um, when I was in high school, people would kind of cat woman. I hated that. Mm -hmm. um, I have four kids, adult kids, or oh, actually three adult kids. We, I was married before. My husband was married before. We both have a Cody. They're a year apart. Wow. Makes life very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a younger daughter together, Kyra, who's 17. And then we have five grandkids. And the sixth on the way is due September... 20th, I believe. So, 
they can't compete with the juniper color eyes. You guys got me. The guy, right? <laughs> okay, so I have not been in real estate that long myself. So I got my license, I believe, that actually, if I had time in between meetings, I was going to ask the exact date. It was either March or April of 2019. Okay. Um, everything I say to you, I feel will be very, very helpful. I hope it is. Um, very much hands on person, um, very much a go getter. So I do expect those that want to be successful to have that same trait. I'm, I'm very honest, I'm a very direct person. You're not going to get anywhere in real estate by sitting around and doing nothing. You've got to get out there, you've got to be busy. So when you first get your license, okay, so you attended class at Honduras or wherever you went, you spent all the money. The big deal then was to pass the test, right? Big, big relief when you pass mm -hmm. the test, right? You pass the test and then you decide to come here to Keller Williams and then you have to go to the bathroom and there's another code, right? 5600. I don't know if the men's is the same code or not, but I was like, gee, many Christmas, how many things can you memorize or know? So how do you make money in real estate? That's what everybody really wants to know, right? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. So um, Joe's class yesterday was on listings. Yes, listings are definitely um, easier in a sort because you're not out running around in the car all the time um, showing buyers homes. Mm -hmm. However, my experience in real estate um, was I definitely started with buyers. I definitely did. Um, my first, I believe my first year, I did a million and I'm set for five million. So it's obtainable. You can do it. Just be, be aggressive, be willing to work hard. Anybody can do this. You just, you just have to focus, okay? So I really believe you'll probably get more business to begin with with buyers, okay? Yes. Yep. If you have listings right out of the gate, I think you're extremely blessed. You're very, very lucky. Um, but I really think we're going to start with buyers. Okay. So that's why I think today's class is so important. Um, you ask yourself, how do I get buyers? Right. Okay. Who has a name badge? Where are they? My car. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. It's on. It's on. Yeah. It's on. Yeah. I know. It should it always should, be on. It should be on. And you know what I do a lot of times? Do this. Do this. Do it on purpose. Upside Go to the down. grocery store. Put it on upside down. Oh. Why? Why do you put it on upside down? Yeah, yeah there you go. Know. Did you know? Oh gosh, I didn't know that. Oh, wow. And then they're like, oh, you're a realtor. <laughs> yeah, you're a realtor, yeah. right? People don't know what you are unless you let them know. Yeah. So put your badges on. Mm -hmm. Where's your badge? This is my car. Okay. Yeah. Next time. Okay. okay. Um, if you don't have one yet, it's okay. Just get them. And it's so all kinds of cute ones. I just got this bleedy one because I copied Jill. I like so little bleedy. Um, but people don't know what they don't know. Like when you first get your real estate license, you pass the test. That's great. That's exciting. That was stressful. But now you want to make money. So how do people know you're a realtor? Everybody pull out your phone. Yeah. Go to your Facebook. If I didn't know you, would I know you're a realtor? Yeah. Yes. yes. I would. Yes. Yes. You guys in the back, would I know you're a realtor by your Facebook page? By my primary Facebook? Page? Yes. No. Okay. Why not? Because I don't tell them. You don't want them to know? You'll be a secret agent? <laughs> <laughs> secret I'm just agent. Yeah, I'm drone just pilot. You really got like a CIA. I'm just agent. asking. I just didn't. I didn't. Uh, I made my color green. Yeah. Page. And then you kind of left your private yep, private. Yep, okay. Yep, did you did you do that um, intentionally or because you wanted to or just didn't think about it? Um I'll be honest, the last I don't know since I got my license, I've been I've been very distracted. Okay. So I proposed one day, took my set license exam the next day. Oh wow. So yeah, that's what happened. And then we got married in between. So yeah, I've been distracted. So uh, this that's is me right. holding myself accountable for doing right. something. Yeah. So there's probably all kinds of opening things that I have to do. That's okay. So, we don't know what we don't know, right? We don't so, know. It's great to have a Facebook business page. It's totally great. Rachel is the absolute best. Who agrees, Rachel? Yeah. Yeah. If you need any type of help with the command or technology or anything, Rachel's the best. 
Um, and you know, she gets all that set up. I, um, and actually thought about it more when I got um, my mentees, I got waxed with using my business page. I did when I first joined, and when Rachel set it up, I put things on there. But then I kind of let that go for a little bit and was just putting everything on my personal page. I'm um, very, very big on my personal page. You're going to know about me is I do a positive post every day, something about inspiration. I might really need it that day. Um, you're going to know I love my kids and my grandkids. My husband, you're going to know that. And you're going to know I sell real estate. Okay. I am, since I have the mentees. Um, gotten better, but I still share like a sale or in contract or whatever on my personal page. Then I share it to my business page. For whatever reason, for me personally, I get more comments. I get more likes if it's shared on my personal page yeah. rather than my business page. I don't know why. I don't know if that's something you can post it on your business page and then share it to your personal. Nope, I did that. For, that doesn't work as well for me. Really, I yeah. tried it and I tried it even this last week. More people know us by our personal. They do. By that. That's they do. Them. Yes. You can't expect them to go out and find a business right. page and then follow. Right. Because when you first join Paul Williams, right, Rachel sets up everything for you and she says, you know, invite all your friends, family, or whatever to like your business page. Everybody does that. That's great. They all like it. But do they really follow it? Do they really go there? No. So they don't know, right? So for me personally, my experience has been anything I put on my personal page. That is real estate related, I then share it to my business page. Just so my business page looks up to date. Yeah. Because I have to quote myself when I got the mentees, my business page did not look as though I had been that busy within the last six months where I've been literally slammed. So that was good. I appreciated that. Um, so it's made me more aware of that. Okay. So badges, you gotta wear them. Let me ask you a question about yeah. that. So you're saying wear them. Do you wear it literally everywhere? Um, I won't wear it everywhere, but I'll tell you what. I've got this class, and then I've got a 415 meet uh, or the phone call with my seller that lives in Canada. And then I'm headed straight to Frederick Town to my daughter's um, varsity volleyball game. We well, you better with this on. Oh, well, you better with it on. So if you go to a restaurant. If, I, if I'm not showing phones. And I walk in yeah. and I've been showing homes and I'll leave it on. But if I'm going out to the or whatever, I'm not going to leave it on. Gotcha. But in places, think about it. You, you want people don't know you're a realtor unless you let them know. You've got to let them know. So if you're not putting something, the best way, and I'm a hands on learner, I don't know if you guys are, so I don't know if I'll, you guys are adults. You can read through a lot of this. Uh, today, I'll do a lot of um, what I actually do in my buyer's orientation and just explaining, you know, your branding. This is what I, this is what's worked for me. Okay. Um, so people have got to know. Okay. Um, as a new agent, or even if you've been in for a little bit, you need to be doing open houses. That's where you get buyers. You've got to do them. You've got to do. If you don't feel comfortable doing one by yourself, ask the ask your mentor to go with you if you're not comfortable yet, or ask another mentee to go with you. Um, it's it's not hard to do an open house. You're gonna, what are you gonna do? If you're gonna do an open house, what are you gonna do about it on your Facebook? You think you're gonna advertise? You're gonna put it out there, right? You're gonna let people know, hey, open house alert this Saturday, da da da, share it to your page, join me. If you'd like to schedule a personal showing, please reach out to me at, and with your phone number, okay? At your open house, when you get there, and I don't know, honestly, Craig, you've seen it before. You can do, um, you can do, you want to do a sign-in sheet because it's no good to go do an open house, spend two hours, really two and a half to three hours because you've got to get the signs out, you've got to put the writer out, and you've got to go do the directional signs. I don't have any with me. Um, you need a sign-in sheet. There's no reason to go do an open house just to say you're doing it and being busy if you're not going to take advantage of your leads that you get. Okay, so you can do a sign in sheet on a piece of paper. Um, be very, very descriptive when you do, and I'm sorry, I don't have one. When you do your open house, type it up, make it look nice. 
put your your name and branding. You guys heard that in which class was that? Kimberly with Lee John? Yeah, that's important. If I'll do that, that's be catchy, be that catchy person. So you're going to put up here, you would want to put the address, okay? And then type up here, name or write it, but make sure it's very neat. Name, um, email, phone number, realtor. And take your pen when they are signing in and do it with them. Say, hi, you know, thank you for coming to the open house. It's great to meet you. I'm Mary. I just need you just for a second. Take your pen. First off, do number one. I always do this on every house, open house. Put a fake name, email, phone number, and write no if they don't have a realtor or make up one. Have one there before that open house starts. Because what happens? People follow exactly what they see, right? Make your handwriting look a little different. <laughs> but so when they come, take your pen, be very um, open, welcoming to them, but say, hey, just I need your name, email, phone number. And are you currently working with a realtor? Why are you asking if they're working with a realtor? Because if not, and, and, you know, I don't want to say solicit yourself, but you know, yes. offer your service. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Ooh, you want to know that off the rip. You yes, you want to know. Somebody got my, the whole time they had a person, you didn't ask them. Exactly. So, now, if they tell you they have a realtor, do you think they're always telling you the truth? No. 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 So why do you ask? Why do you think I ask what's the realtor's name? Oh. Name, email, phone number, and are you currently looking for the realtor? Yes. Oh, great. What's your realtor's name? Put it right there. It's going to, and then they might sometimes go, oh, well, not really. We, we haven't really picked one or we haven't decided. So ask them, put it right there. But if they're filling it out and they skip the space, say, oh, I'm sorry, I need your email or I need your phone number. Why do you want this information that's on that line? Right there, yeah. You follow up. Because if you do an open house and you don't do any follow up, what'd you just do with that time? You wasted it. You missed all that time away from your family. So you have got to follow up, okay? If somebody comes to the open houses that I do, I always have a really nice, um, and you guys can create all these things. Like you guys are on a team. Is anybody else in here on a team? You're on a team. Whose team are you on? Uh, there's a whole team. Okay. Okay. So you would have stuff too. You're individuals? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So if you're on a team, your team is going to have certain things that they want you to lay out or that they use as a team. If not, you're an individual, be creative. Gather ideas from other people. Yeah. Kathy Cairo, the team I'm on, extremely blessed. She, if you'll watch in our um, Kelly Williams Greater Columbus Facebook page, if you ever have a question, she will answer anybody. And it's not a yes or no answer. It is to the 10th degree of what you need to do and how she can help you. So as a new agent too, a great tip is, as you see people around the office or whatever, they impress you or sit back here. And like Dave Truett said the other day, sit back here. You can learn so much good or bad right back there, but it's great. So ask agents that you see, you know, I'm a brand new agent. Give me a tip. What's the best thing you can tell me? Gather some stuff from some new people or for some people that have been in the business for a long time. But so at your open house, look professional. Arrive there early, okay? You want to have the open um, two to four, either Saturday or Sunday, tend to be the best times. Um, you can borrow those from people in the office or if you're on a team, your team has them. Have those out there a couple days ahead of time in your slide, um, your directional signs. You should be at your open house ready to go about 20 till the time it's to start or 30 minutes. You want to be ready. Um, make sure you've got your directional signs out, have enough of them, know where they need to go, get there. You want to always have printed the MLS sheets, okay? You want to think of it this way. There are people coming to the open house that probably, hopefully, for your sake, because you're giving your time up that day, that don't have a realtor, right? So you want to look what? Really professional, right? You've got your sign on sheet, right? I have a buyer's guidebook, which I'll lay out. I'll have our 10 ways to win, which I'm going to go over this today. Um, if I know the home has a home warranty, I'm going to have this laying out. Because a lot of buyers don't know what this is. Or a lot of buyers that even have realtors have no idea what a home warranty is. Okay. I um, 
Honestly, I think this was the biggest waste of money I've done, but I have them. Um, it was on a, a slight moment. This company uh, reached out to me and it sounded like a really good deal. I was working on a contract. I was half listening. So I agreed to do this. It cost me like $200. It's, it's okay. I mean, it's okay. If they call you, don't do it. But it's <laughs> nice to have. I can lay these out at my open house or I will give them the past clients. I got um, 75. And my, I'll pass it around. I mean, my picture is in here a lot, and they did a nice job. And it's, it's a nice magazine, but I don't recommend that. But it's a good way. It makes me look more professional. Okay. So I've got my sign in sheet. I'll have our team flyer laying out. I'll have my 10 ways to win, my buyer's guide. And then what else will I lay out? I always want to come from contribution, always, in everything I do. You're gonna be really, really successful in real estate if you're contributing to something, okay? So as many people sign in at the um, home, if they don't have a realtor, if they don't have a realtor, that's when I'm gonna hand these things to them, okay? I'm gonna say, oh, wow, well, okay. Always have your MLS sheet printed. Is everybody familiar? You know how to get on MLS and play around and do things? Mm -hmm. Everybody, awesome. Okay, so you always take your MLS sheets with you. Okay, that's another way you're just being, you're being. Do they always have to be in public? No. I mean, it looks nicer. If it's your listing, I would definitely go that extra mile. But if you're just hosting an open house or somebody else, I think mean, it's nice you brought the MLS sheets. Okay. It looks nicer, but no, I don't think that's necessary. Um, use that time when somebody comes in and signs in. If they don't have a realtor, ask them. Or here's an MLS sheet. Are you familiar with how to read it? Do you understand it? Go over it with them. Explain to them and say, you know what? Like I'll say, you know what? I'm really happy to have you. And Kathy wrote a book on 10 ways to win. You know, we all know it's a very challenging market right now. And I'll pass this around so you guys can look at it. Um, just because you're an individual doesn't mean you can't look at other things and get ideas, right? You can put your own thing together, okay? I'm gonna pass, I have another one. I'm gonna pass these around. Now, so we've done the open house. Make sure you're really helpful. Answer as many questions as you can. Um, if they don't have an agent, don't swarm on them. Nobody likes a salesman approach. You just want to be helpful. You know, as they're walking through, you know, I tell them, you know, look the house over really well. And if it's not your listing, tell them, you know, this isn't my listing, um, but I'll be happy to answer any questions I can. And if I don't know the answer, what will you do? That's the answer. You're going to find out. Don't make up something. Be real. Tell them you don't know. Now, so for some of my own analysis, because I've been doing quite a few here lately. Yeah. Um, I have printed out a couple of offers. Blank offers. Okay, good. Because you have them with you. Okay, exactly. That's like great. Them with you. So that okay. if there's any questions about the buying process and that, because we work obviously with a lot of buyers, all we really have right now is with that one list. Sure. Um. So I do that, and then I there was one time where I printed the RPD. Okay. And I, I always have the RPD with me. Okay. So that was the one thing that I was like, I don't know if yes. it was like, and it was my team leaders listening. So it was like, there was, you know, there was nothing there that could have, but I didn't know how listing agents, if you're not doing your open house on your own listing, the listing agents get like, I mean, as a public, if they're going to buy it, they're going to be leave. impressed by you. Okay. If you take the documents. Okay, so on the Kathy Kyber group, and there's a lot of teams that do this, it's just the team I'm on, so it's what I'm familiar with. Under the documents section, anytime we do a listing, under the documents session, uh, system, like Joe talked about yesterday, we put tons of information out yeah. there. We put the home information sheet. So it tells you, if you're doing an open house for our team, everything that you see on the document section, print it out, take it there with you. It tells you the age of everything, the RPDs on there, let base pay if you need it. And I usually make like two folders yep. just in case like we do have, and it'll have like all the buyer numbers. Yeah. Like everything, not just specific to that property, mm -hmm. but just in case you do pick up a buyer, you're that much more prepared. Exactly. Very good. Very good. Very good. 
don't just sign up to do an open house, do an open house right. Yeah. If someone's trusting you to do it, do it right. Get the signs out, put the writer out, do your homework, look in the MLS, know as much about that home as you possibly can. When you show up at that house, you should know how many square feet it has, how many bathrooms. Um, is there anything on the RPD in case somebody asks you? Know as much as you can, okay? So you can be informational. Now, let's say, um, Always your business cards too. Everybody has business cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, no. We'll just just get them. Uh, Pam. Pam. I think is that yeah. your get them. Okay. Pam. Yeah. yeah. She'll get them for you. Uh, you want to have those at the open house. So anybody that's not represented, um, you want to make sure don't let them. And you're going to be a little nervous. That's okay. They think of it this way. Okay. When you you're the realtor, right? You study. You took the test. You passed, right? You know more than anybody that's coming to look at that house, right? Even if you don't think you do, fake it till you make it. You are the expert, right? Learn it before you go. Know the details about that house, okay? So, no, no go ahead. So, I did an open house with Ray Truitt last weekend or uh -huh. maybe two weeks ago on a condo. Okay. Super nice condo, like, our to the rest. But I kept getting questions. Yeah, like, are a little condo different. association questions, and yeah. I was like, be honest. <laughs> oh, I did. I was yeah. like, it's not my listing, and I don't know. I, I checked the RPD and all that. I was like, this is stuff that you're probably gonna have to ask the HOA. Right. Um, could be maybe were the HOA documents in the no? Okay. In a, in a, yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, like. Can we have dogs? If we can, is right. there a way for it? Like, the thing you can do in that situation, if you don't know, and especially if it's not your, if it's your listing, you better darn better know yeah. before you list it, right? Yeah. And have those. But if it's not your listing, just say, you know what? I'm sorry, I'm listing this house open today. It's not my listing, but who are you on the list here? I'll make sure to reach out to the listing agent and I'll make sure they get in touch with you. And the, if, especially if they have a realtor, they have a realtor, give it to that listing agent. Yeah. They can get it. If they don't, a realtor by all means you oh, find out when you get back to them there's also if you um if you're in a condo association a lot of the times you find the dialogue online so if you're yes. getting your computer and there's not wi-fi like that's because there's a hot spot on the phone you look it up and you go and have it pulled up like you know if you get that first question in that first 20 minutes it's like okay well i'm just gonna open it you'll have it and open it up and then you have it and then you're set for the rest of the time Right. I don't really know what I have to pull up here. So right. See if we, we can look at them together. Yes. Let me see if I can help you. Would that yes. be the same thing if you're in a neighborhood that has HRA? You can normally look them up. Yeah. You can normally look them up. What was your question? I was just going to say, it's a, I think questions are great because it gives us a reason for follow up. Exactly. And if we just do that, so to not know something there, or even if we know something, but we have a good reason to follow them later to be. Yeah. And it takes the jitters to be out of making that follow up phone call. Yes. What am I going to say? What am I going to do? Right. Well, right. Yeah. Right. Like just, I, 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 even though I haven't done one yet, one of the things that I'm looking at is saying is I'm looking for reasons to follow up. That's right. There. You just hit the nail on so, the head. You just hit the nail on the head. Like, oh, your kids play volleyball. Pretty. My kid that doesn't exist plays volleyball too. What's the reason to call? That's you right. Know? That's right. Cool. That's right. Uh, so be prepared for the open house. Okay, take it seriously. Take it seriously. You're going to work some open houses. You're not going to get a single lead. They're all yeah. going to be represented. And it just happens. But you know what? You're gaining knowledge. You're getting more comfortable with opening that Supra. You're getting comfortable to make sure you make sure all the downstairs windows were relocked. You're gaining success in the business. Okay. Um, even if you do open houses, if you only get one or two, if you follow up with them correctly. It's going to turn into something. It may not turn into something right then. Or, like Caitlin said, she took her contract with her. You will have people that are like, you know what? I want this house. Don't be afraid to say, Let's now, now, now you said you didn't have a realtor. Is that correct? You know what? I would be honored to help you. You know, if, are you here. wanting to sit yeah. down and discuss this now? Or do you want to be after? What are you more comfortable with? I will give great, great pride and I will take great care of you. I would love to earn your right to be a realtor. You just get an order too. If you have an order like that, you just come to it and say, here, just look this over. Um, you can just ask me out after this or tomorrow for coffee and, you know, get the process started for you. And if you like me to, my favorite thing to send, like, if I initiate, like, the contact.
plan for the open house, we have the uh, link for Rapid Mortgage, which is our lender. So like, is that if we get that rapport going and like, oh, you haven't been pre-approved yet? I have an app like, to download all your documents upload right there. Let me just go ahead and send it to you. There's a your number I can send it. And then they have all your information as well. Mm -hmm. You all, I can't stress enough. You want to come from contribution. Don't ever come from being salesy. You want to help them. You want to help them. Be caring. Listen to them. Listen to what they have to say. Yeah. You know, as they're walking through, say to them, hey, did you have any questions? Yeah. You know, you know, make sure you check out everything. You know, mm -hmm. look it over really well. I'm here if you have any questions. Mm -hmm. Don't just like and don't yeah. be friendly. You yeah. know, don't be yeah. overly, but be friendly to them. Mm -hmm. Bring cupcakes, candy. I bring sparkly wine all the time. Do you? I do. Mm -hmm. And those little dollar, okay, dollar trees. Mm -hmm. You can find the cutest little like open house little friendly stuff. You can, and, and you can it. make it homely, like yeah, you know, friendly. It's, yeah. Make sure that people wear booties and they take off their shoes too. And you have to start that when you first get there. Set your shoes by the door. Mm -hmm. Don't wear oh, your shoes in the house. That's just that's just not. Cool. And you want to be weird about that too. I mean, not weird, obviously, but like super serious about that too. Mm -hmm. So if they walk in with these footprints on there, yeah, they got time to get back out. Yeah. Okay, so open house. So how are you going to follow up after? What what might be what might be something you do? They didn't have an agent. Okay, how are you going to follow up with them? How would you guys do it? What would you do? I follow up with an email usually on Monday. On Monday, okay. What if you're listening, Happy Hybrid Group, and our all, all our offers have to be in by Sunday, say eight o'clock? What would you do? Send the text. Okay, as they're going through the open house too, and they seem interested, or they're asking a big question right now when they first come in the door, are there any offers? Should you know that when you get to the open house? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, you should know. And can you share that with people coming yes. through? Definitely, definitely. Um, make sure that when they're walking through the house that you tell them, you know, um, if it's your listing, you better darn well know when your offers are due. If it's not, you've studied that home, you know. Um, you know what, if you're interested in this home, if this is the one for you, all offers are due in by 8 o'clock at the, the, the this evening. Make sure they know that. That listing agent has trusted you and giving you the opportunity to hold their house open. Yes, they want you to gain a potential lead and a buyer. They do, but they also want to know that you've done a good job more than while you're there. Okay? I don't want to talk about that. I want you to other listing agents to join you open house as well. Right. Very, very true. So should you leave a note or anything for the homeowner or should you follow up with the listing agent that trusted you to hold their house open? Should you follow up with them? I, I always do as soon as it's over. You follow up with who? The listing agent. Very good. Very good. Let them know how the day works. Very good. Because they want to know. They want to know. I had this experience. Um, holding the open house, and I contacted the listing agent when I got there and asked her if she could give me a call. She didn't call me until after the open house, like two or two hours. The listing agent? Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a little rude. Did you send her a text to whoever it was? The listing agent? Could be, maybe she was out her showings. I mean, it could be. I sent, well, I sent her, um, it was through Messenger because that's how we had to communicate. Okay. And she said, well, I didn't see this until just now. But I just I'll say for me, when I'm really busy, a text is the first thing I see, no question. Because my phone, even if I'm showing a house, I can I can look at that real quick. But it just seems to know she yeah. contacted me right after it was over. Like I'm thinking if you know, you know you have an open house being held, you're kind of available a little bit, you know, with some communication over the phone, if nothing else. Have you all held more than one open house for that person? This is the first one ever. That was your first. Was that your first open house? No, that was not okay. my first one. First one of her, and okay. I have never had that experience before. Okay. And yeah, I just, I say that's I didn't see that. Did. You were being on the up and up. Yeah. Always be the up and up person. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Um, and you said, was it Lucas? You said something that's important. You want to make sure you do a good job, right? Because you nailed it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Words I've, been, uh, I've been like uh, linking up with people that I went to high school. I didn't get it. I just I'm not from mine, but like just linking up with real estate agents that I know that I went to school with. Yeah. Maybe I didn't really want to go to school. Sure. Trying to like create. That's great. That's great. That's great.
that's great. I always say everybody can learn something new every day, mm -hmm. right? When you think you know everything, no. you're yeah, I'm sorry, you're a liar. <laughs> you know, or you're just not gonna get any better, but you can always learn more, right? You can always learn more. Um, okay, so how would um okay, so I kind of threw a wrench in there when I said um offers would be by eight o'clock. Um three people on the list said no, they weren't represented and you want to start follow up with them. You just want to get in touch with them. What could you do? Okay, what would you say in a text? What would you say? Um, it was nice meeting you yesterday, meeting your family. Um, I would love to work with you um, if you're interested in. Can I stop you right there? Yeah. That's what I did when I first started. You want know, me to tell you why that doesn't work? Why? Because I'm coming across salesy. Okay. If I text you and I say, hey, it was wonderful to meet you yesterday. Um, I'm looking for any feedback you can give me on the home and da da da. Are you going to be more likely to respond to me? I'm not. Oh, you wouldn't respond with that? I, I don't. I don't know if I would. If I'm. If I wasn't interested in that home. Well, you could say that, right? Okay, I could. I tried your way, and everybody tried your own way. But I tried your mm -hmm. way, and most people just don't take you back. Yeah. 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 They don't I, yeah. If I wasn't interested in the home at all, I just probably wouldn't you respond just wouldn't at say all. Anything? Well, what everybody else's thoughts would be. Well, how would you feel if I text you and I said, hey, Lucas, it was really nice to meet you at the open house yesterday. I'm looking to see, uh, I'm looking for feedback at 3041 Holly Bank Lane. I think if that's an open-ended question, you're more likely to have that person to answer. Like, yes. yes. That's what I found. Okay. That's what I found. Because I definitely tried that. Yeah. And it didn't work. I just didn't get any responses. I would try to text. Or definitely if you call them right away, they don't seem to, unless they want to write an offer. Yes. That's different. And that's right. And so that's what I was going to mention. It. So when you did it my way and then get a response, did you then follow up with another yes. text or a call or something? Yes. Okay. I give it a day or so. Okay. And then I would. And I always send an email too, thanking them. Mm -hmm. um, another way you can do it too. Um, and not everybody's always going to respond. But really, from an open house, you just need one. You just need yeah. one, right, to get a buyer to go out, come in and have a buyer's meeting with them, right? Don't just follow up once and then let it go, right? They could be busy. They could have been in a separate day. They could have been at work. They could have been whatever. Maybe they just forgot. Maybe they get 10,000 text messages and miss yours. Don't give up on one. Have a system for your open houses, how you're gonna follow up. Have a folder, it's dated. You know the, the name of the home that you did, the address, you know the date, you've got all their information. Have a folder, an open house folder, or however you want to create. Everybody does it differently, but you need to have a system, whether in command or on your phone, whatever you do. You know, I sent this follow up, follow up again, follow up. No means not now. That's what it means. Yes, that's what it means. A lot of people are afraid to make that phone call or reach out. Yes. No, I was just saying, if they, if they weren't in the market for something, why, why did they go come? The and do you know them? Do you know them? Do you care? Do you care on it? I mean, they put no on the form. They came to the house. It's your job right. to reach out to them, to follow up with them. Sometimes neighbors. Come, no, neighbors. No, no neighbors. No neighbors do. But, but they, they don't fill out the paper. Oh, yes, they will. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, everybody, that comes my, everybody that comes to my house, everybody that comes to my house, they're neighbors right here. Yes. I did it. You know, I to. Yes. They were neighbors. They're neighbors. And I just want to keep it. Yeah. That's okay. I say, you know what? They're they they right. their information now. I'm using the code base right now. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I do. I do. I say, you know what? They're like, I want to put my information down. And I said, well, you know what? This is just to protect you and my sellers. I need your information here. Just for a bit in case something would happen with COVID. Oh, I need to get in touch with you. That's really good. Yeah. If they say no, I said, I'm sorry. And these homeowners, you know, they have requested, they don't know they haven't requested, they have requested, I have record of what they want to test in their home. So, yes, please, just one of you. It doesn't have to be both. Mm -hmm. Just one. Yeah, you're not coming through. Right? You want to know? <laughs> That's it. Lisa, do you have questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. You chime in anytime you want to, okay? Okay. All right. Um, okay, so don't be afraid to follow up. Have a system. Have a folder. Don't just follow up once and drop them. 
um, the lead generation path that, uh, class that Kathy Cairo did and Carol Gonzalez. Did anybody take that? Fantastic. How many how many follow ups does she do, do a year? Oh. Oh. Mind blowing. Yeah. Mind blowing. Yeah. Mind blowing. Um, some this is a little bit off track, but being new in the business and stuff, you really want to come from contribution, right? So your your friends, your family, or whatever, everybody plays on Facebook, right? I don't care when you do it. Go buy them, go to the dollar store, get your cards, two for a buck, wherever you want to get them. Send cards to people. Don't say anything in there about real estate. But if you have on your Facebook page made it now, don't do only real estate on your Facebook page. Yeah. Don't be yeah. one of those people. But keep it fun and keep your posts interesting. Send them a birthday card. Uh, their kids graduated college or they're doing whatever. Send them a card. Do something. Keep your name and presence all the time. Like handwritten stuff. They do like handwritten stuff. Like the last one that I went to, I didn't have business cards. Yep. So I went to Dollar Tree. Love that place. And just got like these little pretty like milk cards. Yep. And wrote my information down in them so that like thanks right there on the envelope. Here you go. Even if they said I had a real card. Like I didn't write, right. you know what I mean? Like a little stack of those right. and that's a good thing. I don't like not like three people here or there, but like right. you keep doing that, yes. you get used to it, yes. and it just becomes second nature for any of Right. And that brings up something too. When they come through your open house, don't only help the people that don't have a realtor. Be helpful to everybody. everybody. You don't know. Maybe they don't like their realtor. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're looking to switch. It doesn't matter. Just be nice, be right. Right. Treat others as you want to be treated. That's yes. that's like a golden rule. That was the same thing. I was just speaking myself. The whole thing through this, I'm looking for a reason to follow up. Yes. Like, that's you all have you an want. agent and I can help you. That's yes. what I'm We don't know what those circumstances are. That's but right. hey, that guy or girl always answered my question and helped me. Yes. If I'm coming from, as you said, that yes. position of servitude, I'm right. helping you with something. That's right. You're going to remember the person who helped me as opposed to the person who just wanted your money. That's exactly. And people know when you just want their money. They know. They and know when you're actually. Money. Uh, I was showing uh, some houses for one of my clients the other day, and so I didn't really know like who I was expecting. I didn't know what they looked like. Right. And these people had walked up to the door, and I, I was like, "Are you not?" No. Okay. And the one lady that was with this guy, she said, um, "Can you show us the house?" And the other guy was like, "No, I already have a realtor." And we were just you know, getting there, and she was like, well, they're supposed to be here too, so like, where are they? So like, apparently the realtor was late. The clients had shown up like a little bit later too, but it's fine. But like, that realtor that was supposed to be doing the show in the same time we were, was so, also late, and she was like, oh, okay. And like, I was like, no, I can't go with anybody else. I have to have a contact with that person. Oh, shit. So <laughs> it's like those one we'll time, time to remind you'll me. see that happen too. Like you really never, that's what you said. What if they don't like their realtor? Right. You don't know. You don't know. And maybe they do really like their realtor because it's their cousin, but maybe their best friend <laughs> is getting ready to buy a house and they don't want to refer their cousin. Like, hey, I met this person at open house. Yeah. She was awesome. She was friendly. She, she was wrong. genuine. There you go. You don't know what to do in your she wine. That's my right. whole life. They say cheers on them. They're they cute. do. Yes, yeah. I'm supposed to. I'm not done that. Okay. Um, okay. So, anybody have questions on open houses or about following up? Have to follow up. Yes. Have to follow up. Follow up, follow up, follow up. So, you don't want to follow up anymore. Okay. And then still work. Yes. And then do it until they make your not. And Kathy even uses an example on um, she kept product. We use top producers like command. We yes. just haven't switched to top producer yet. So use your command because that's the tool that you're given, and it's a good tool. Um, <laughs> it is. I just don't. I, I need to be better about using it. But our team. Your voice is, said, yeah. Well, I, I, I'm guilty. Don't be so silly. No, Rachel, I'm guilty. No, our. I should use command more, but our team uses top producer. So I try to use top producer and command both, but I, it's, it's yeah, double. It's so a I'm going to use it, Rachel. Um, what were you going to say? No, you answered it. Right okay. Now. Are you listening? Rachel, these are recorded. 
Oh, these will be out there on YouTube. So. That's Rachel. We yes. love commands. Yes. And you know what? It's awesome because seriously, it is. It is. It is. we have so many tools and, yeah. and we're, we're really, absolutely we really are. I just, I'm guilty. I should make more time to learn more about commands. So guilt of mine. Yeah, you know, okay. it's a lot. I, I it's a lot to learn. YouTube videos mm -hmm. and everything to try to utilize it better. And even that. Yeah. So I was just there so that so they just okay so every I don't know if everybody was in here but Kimberly we're gonna yeah, just there's a training coming up yeah, yeah. okay it's not and that sounds like a training honestly if I have time I should probably do it. Yeah. it's on September it's September first from ten to four yeah so that'll be a great one honestly you should all be at and I'm gonna sidetrack a little bit bold okay seven hundred ninety nine dollars. If you haven't signed up or you don't have plans to sign up for gold, I'm telling you, it is honestly a must do. That is when my business completely stacked on it. it really nice. Gold makes you uncomfortable. Um, it helps me. It's just like Dayla said, to be honest. Um, it helps you business wise. It's going to help you as a mom or a dad in a relationship. It's amazing. It really is. You will truly be very uncomfortable. But if you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. Now, how many do they do that just once a year? Is it twice? Then? Twice. Twice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think you're right. You are right. It's truly worth it. It really, really is. Bold is, it's amazing. It really is. And the cool thing about bold is $7.99, you get it back and you guys will have to check with Rachel and Megan. But you earn on your next three transactions, you get all the money back. You get so much per transaction oh. back. So it's a win-win. Yeah. It's a win-win. I got all my money back. It's, but they are, it's, I don't know the instructor this time. Well, and they do a scholarship. They do. They do do a scholarship and ask them. Yeah. Yeah. Ask about that because people do do that. And um, different um, realtors in the office have even offered to pay for people before. I know Dave Truett's done that before. Mm -hmm. Just very kind. Um, and Mega Camp, they talked about. I've never been to a Mega Camp. So if I can, I'm going to try to do that. I've got oh, a busy nice. day on that Wednesday. But those sound so like the hours for maybe 10 to 4, I think yeah. it said. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 10 to 4. Two, two days. days. It said four, three on one. Yeah, I, I two days at the wrong day. day for yeah. 24th and 25th. Yeah, 10 to 4. That's yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Who all has kids in here? Right, doesn't care. No, you're just not ready. You're just gonna, your kid party. I'm the kid right now. Your, your kid plays volleyball. You said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a super star. <laughs> she's a middle hit. Yeah, she's, <laughs> she's a middle hit. My daughter's at the right time. Oh, um, you're individual, you said, right? Who's your mentor? Do you have a mentor? Have you been signed with a mentor yet? Uh, They're probably just getting ready, maybe, too. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not saying this. I'm saying no. I'm saying maybe. <laughs> you just got your license when? March. Okay. I look, I haven't done 95% of the stuff I'm going to be doing. I'm not about that. So. That's okay. That's okay. What is it? The by one thing I shared the one day you can always restart. Restart. Mm -hmm. And always just start where you are. Yeah, just restart. As long as you get better every day, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Start where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sidekick on bold and mega camp. Mega camp, I don't know anything about, but it sounds great. But bold, that's I'm serious. You really, really need to do that. And if you want to take advantage of their sponsor, do that too. I know that's out there. So reach into Dayla. You guys have got to really help me keep on track because I've got two. Um, two okay, we're good. Um, okay, so if you guys are good, any questions on open houses? So Facebook, you're gonna you're gonna put stuff out there. When you go do your open house, take a picture, pull the sign, zoom it in, put it on your Facebook. You can video. do a Facebook Live. video. Yes, put it out there. Put it out there. I'll look you all up and I'll know if I do it in your future. Craig already knows I do it to him. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we're going to move past open houses. Okay, so working with buyers. That's how you're going to get business, I feel like, is working open houses and putting things out there, wearing your name tag, letting everybody know you're in real estate. 
and, and don't be salesy, be nice, be contribution. Okay, so now you've gotten a buyer, right? You got them from the open house. What is the first thing you do with your buyer? Consult. How do you do your consult? You know, we we yeah. bring them in the office. If, I think I've done one outside the office, but okay. usually bring them in the office and we have a list and talk them on some questions that we just go through. Okay. Kind of outline the transaction timeline and um, expectations. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of get their, uh, their uh, what do we call them, non negotiables mm -hmm. um, before we let them leave. We set up the MLS search right there on the spot. Yeah. And those conference rooms, you have those big computers, so they yep. kind of see how that works. Yep. Um, yeah. Has everybody, um, does everybody know you should do a buyer's consult when you gain a buyer? You know, I uh, copied the uh, NAR from the NAR website. There's okay. like a sheet of like qualifying questions and stuff. Uh -huh. You should send that to the buyer client. Okay. Have it fill that out. But I like setting up a book more better. Yeah. Maybe I'm just not an option. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You want face to face because what are you doing if you need a face to face? Either you're in the office and you're really good at you get a good. Um, because the great thing about real estate is like you can choose who you want to work with. That's exactly like, right. If you get them in the office and you find out that like, mm -hmm, I don't like you. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and not even in like a mean sense, but like I'm not going to work well with you because our personalities are going to clash. It gives you an option to cut it off at the beginning mm -hmm. before it gets too far. Mm -hmm. And also, I've told, I well, I told him for everybody before they come in, uh, if there's anybody else that's making. These decisions with you, they need to bring them, them with you. Why is that? You brought up a good point. Because then, who, who are you saying to be making decisions? Parents, spouses, mm -hmm. uh, caregivers, munos, um, their brother. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Anybody who is going to be on the loan, who is going to be with you at the houses, who wants to be at the inspection, they need to be there for the whole process. Mm -hmm. Because as an agent, you don't want, you know, it. It kind of like sets boundaries too as an agent to a client relationship because you don't want dad coming to the inspection and you haven't met dad the whole time and you didn't know that he was going to be a part of this at all. Mm -hmm. We didn't even know who dad was. We thought he was in California, but all of a sudden he pops up to the inspection and he's, and he's like, he's pointing out all these things Everything that are wrong. wrong with the house. Exactly. And like the inspections are hard enough to explain to a buyer. Like you really want to make sure that like that buyer console, you mm -hmm. get face to face, you get all the people involved and you get all their non -assistance. Mm -hmm. just set up the best client agent relationship right off the gate. Very good. So do you guys, do you have, um, okay, so two ways for the buyer, buyer to consult. Okay, when you date a buyer, you always meet with that buyer in person. Mm -hmm. Always, yeah. always. Yeah. During COVID, you did Zoom, whatever, whatever we have to do. But you always have that meeting. The reason you have that meeting with them is because you're setting your expectation of yourself and of them. And it's okay. kind of just control. Yes, it does. You know exactly what they want. You don't want to be out running around showing houses and then not be prepared. So if you sit down and I go over everything with them in this buyer's book, they're prepared before I'm, I'm not. Don't ever take a buyer out, A, unless they're pre-approved or you've sat down and had a meeting with them. You're okay. wasting your time. You know, spinning your wheels. One house before a consult and one consult before pre-approval yes. and then I'm cutting it loose. Yes. yes, yes. Does everybody understand why they need to be pre-approved before you take them out? So you can know how much home they can afford? Exactly, why else? Well, also because if they're not pre-approved then offers won't be accepted. You're wasting your time and your it's gas says that they're serious. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of times people think they can be pre-approved for 250. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe they're approved for 350. Yeah. You're setting up a search incorrectly. Or 140. And right. you see 250 houses and you back down to a lesser house. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So has anybody not done a buyer's consult meeting yet? I have not. That's okay. Yeah, that's I have okay. not, and I've had four buyers, but okay. I've never brought them into the office. You don't have to bring them into the office, okay? I bring them into the office, or I meet them someplace. If you bring them into the office, it's kind of, it, okay, think of it this way. Where do you live, and where does this buyer live? 
what is convenient for them? Mm -hmm. If they live in Delaware, I'm not going to make them go to the east end, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to meet them in Starbucks or Panera yeah. or another Kellogg Williams office or whatever. If you bring them into the office here, you can kind of do a highlight reel of what a great place that we have mm -hmm. our brokerage is. That's mm -hmm. nice. Take them on a tour. Show them what all you have. Reserve a conference room. Yeah. And like she said, you know, you've got the, the monitor you can use because you're going to set up the search right then with them as long as they're free. And the one that is putting is very cute. It does. does. Like you have, because we don't have like books like that, obviously, for right. our team. But for the first five months. You guys months, can all create this yeah, book. Exactly. Because I don't have them. Well, we were, I, I have printouts, you know what I mean? And I have one for me and then one for the team leader mm -hmm. and one for him and one for her and one for the kid. And it was like, okay. <laughs> You just pull them up right there on the thing and they can see it. And if they want to stay home, that's fine. And I can also send you an email and mm -hmm. stuff if mm -hmm. you have any questions. Mm -hmm. So you have a done a buyer's consultant. Have you done one? Negative. Negative. Have you done one? Have you done one? Uh, and you have it, right, Greg? You just heard me talk about them. And I you know. have this book, right? I've okay. done listing, but I've never. Oh, you have? Has anybody? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. No, I meant to ask that around. around. No, did I run? You did. You did. Yeah. Oh, okay, this guy. Yes, he did. Are you sitting on it? He is volleyball dad. You're good. Okay. You're good. Um, I learned by doing. Who else learns by doing? Me. Who's game for doing a buyer's meeting? Yeah? Who wants to be my buyer? Oh, role play? Yeah. You want to be my buyer? All right. I'm buyer. All right. Yeah, I need my book. Need my book. <laughs> um, he's got your book. I don't know. I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Are you comfortable? I don't have a mask. Are you comfortable? Okay. No, so you're right. Okay. So, um, I forget your first name. The hospital is possibly the hospital Harley the third. What? <laughs> I think it's called Malik, for sure. Malik? I go with it. My name is Adrian. Adrian? <laughs> 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 oh, he's gonna be fun one. He is. Are you sure you're gonna be my buyer? Referral. Referral. Refer it. I love it. Okay, you're not married. How are you? Married, yes. Just about a month ago. Okay, listen, we are all oh, okay. buyers. Because yes, 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 yes. I do have to call my seller, right? Okay. 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 So it has, I guess. Um, so thank you for coming into the office. Um, let me show you around. Okay, so we come in, I take him to the front conference room. Okay. And the whole reason I'm bringing him in is because I'm setting the tone for myself and for them. And then, yeah, do I want to work with them? Hmm. We're going to find out. Suspect. Suspect. Okay. So what I do with this, I always have Keisha, can you see? Okay. I keep forgetting. Yes, yes. Okay. He's feisty. <laughs> Here you go. Here you gotta come over here so she can see. But we can only do it from like over there. Can I sit here? I'll move. Here, you sit there and I'll be here. No, you're fine. Just he says this okay. Just well, she can't see. well, yeah, actually I can only see the class, everyone else. There now I can see a part of you. <laughs> okay, yes. I can see, see you. Buyer? Yep, I see you guys. Okay, here we go. All right, so he comes in. I take him on the tour. We go to a conference room. Okay, I always give my buyers. I always have them set across from me. Okay, and I I always have different paperwork. Make sure I go over the buyers' loyalty agreement. Please don't let me forget that. Here you are. I would like to go over this with you. Have you purchased? Is this your first purchase, or have you purchased a home before today? So I only land before now. Only land. Okay, that's exciting. Where did you buy land at? Belize, Central America. Wow, that's what, what took you to Belize? My dad uh, mentioned that he wanted to retire there. So uh, I went ahead of that to find something to build on for him. So I have six pieces of land there right now. You do? Very good. So what, seriously, I think so. What can I check here? Um, I'm from Mansfield. Okay. Um, there, you don't have to have a real estate license. Well, in the leaves, you know? So it's the Wild Wild West, and nobody calls the rules. Oh. Um, so when I came back, I said, let's try and learn something about how to actually do this. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. If this were my actual buyer speaking, it would go just like this. It really yeah. would, because I was just going to be real. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm having a conversation. Yeah. I'm just having that. 
You're, you're curious? I'm so curious. I know. Yeah, I just see it. It, was, it happened so much more naturally in person. Huh? I was very natural. Yeah. It, uh, just be yourself. Don't ever be fake. You know, there's always scripts. Read the scripts. They're all back there. The scripts work, but make them sound like you. Okay? Um, that's fascinating. I love the leaves. We go in there and please this a lot. That's awesome. So cool. Okay, so we're going to go over this buyer's book today because I want to make sure you have a very good understanding of how to operate. Okay, um, tweak all of this. I'm doing my buyer's presentation. Okay, you guys have in here in your books, and it goes through. Um, it starts actually on page one. Really. <laughs> so you're going to be able to tweak this and do it exactly how you want to do it. You could make a book. This wouldn't be. Oh. Do you guys have this? No. They didn't, get, they didn't give you the whole week? We just showed it. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Here. Yeah. Well, somebody, does anybody know how to do the copy? Do you guys need it? Here, take a five minute break. I'm going to go. You got it? Okay. Will you make one for everybody? I'm so sorry. I thought they need you guys the whole week. Um, Keisha, did you get yours yet, dear? No, I have not. Okay. It's in your um, mailbox. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll wait for you to get that. Okay, Keisha. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. He was doing a gun check. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. I met you very recently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know, I know this is yeah. yeah. That's good. To get. So how did you get started in the gun stuff? Uh, in Belize. So I was working with, and that's actually one of the things that I got to use as a connection. But I was working with the uh, the largest landowner in Belize. Uh, I'm one of the developed projects there called Mahogany Bay Village. Mm. They brought in a a Delta pilot. To do the drone work. Like, I want to fly a drone. So my dad was in the Air Force, so I grew up with a liking of airplanes and things of that nature. So even the name of the drone business is Aero. My dad's initials, Aero Aerial. So in honor of my dad in the Air Force. So okay. where I'm from in Mansfield is Mansfield Mom Air Force right down the street. Okay. So I grew up going to the air shows, doing stuff like that. So okay. I've always been fascinated by aviation. Mm -hmm. So when he had the drone over there and I saw what they were doing. I said, well, I need to learn so that I can do these things. So I started doing, I think most of what I was doing was land, land development. Mm -hmm. So what I was able to do with drones for making land, it's like pretty cool. Because you can get elevation. Oh, yeah. Well, you can get all kinds of cool stuff by GPS data mm -hmm. that way. And I said, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started flying. And then I just worked on developing the skills over the last six years. It just did. Yeah. So, had to get my license, had to be insured, had to be legally established, all that kind of stuff. Not like certain people who, okay, you're gone. <laughs> but anyway, um, just for my perspective, you can do the things that I'm supposed to, but it, it's fun. It's a, it's a nice way to do that. So, a lot of people have them, but not everybody does them the way that they're supposed to. Right, right. But it was fun. And that's cool. You know, when I was working, actually, funny enough, I used to work for um, Congress. Oh, you did? Yeah. What'd you do? So I was part of their marketing team. Okay. So I did, I worked with the curriculum team to help them. Anyway, so I got my education through them before I was no longer employed. Very cool. And I also worked on growing their drone business. But anyway, because um, they have a drone education program. Anyway. So, anybody else know that? Plus, we kept that big on the market. So um, that's when. Before I left there, I said, you know what? Because I went there to get my license and walked out with the job. So I was like, oh. Well, that wasn't all bad. And then I said, well, how long am I going to be here before you then take this test for free? So I hit my six months, took my test. Well, that was smart. Did it out. While we're waiting on copies, every person, what's your number one question with working with buyers? Number one question. Are you great for me? No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I phrased that wrong. I phrased our, our question. Person. Your question. Yes, your personal question. What do you find that's hard or you're struggling or you just don't? Oh, okay. Sorry, I phrased that wrong. And there's no such thing as a silly question. And I might not know the answer, but I mean, I, 
anything that you don't so know what five dollars or your pithy about or anything of that nature? My, my biggest thing right now is just getting the buyer motivated. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because like the understanding of the market if yep. they're not motivated we're yep. just spinning the wheels and absolutely no we're absolutely not getting anywhere. okay i've put in i've put in i've i've, I've sold a property but i also okay uh, great job i've also put in a lot of offers where okay. you know they come in under asking yeah. price and they don't understand that we're not we're, okay we're not even competitive at this price um Thank also yeah, because also, they start off motivated. Yeah, okay, that's like that right here. And, We're gonna yep, I know this. Yep. I got that here. I think okay. that's a great step. I'm, okay. Um, but like, I have one girl, she found a property she loved, and she was in a really good position to get it because it was kind of she's a single woman, and it was a, it was like a studio apartment, it was a four hundred square foot home for a hundred thousand wow. dollars, and I was like. You know, we might be able, there's not going to be a lot of competition, but we might be able to come in. And then it took her shit like a month to to get her paperwork in, to get oh, a pre approval. Okay. And then the day that we put it in an offer, another offer came in, and she wanted to come in under. Okay, remind me about the car story when I get to that part, and I'll help you overcome and, that. Um, Oh, and she still hasn't gotten her freaking pay stubs in, and we're still oh, last. Wow. It's been like it's been like almost two months. Wow. I think that, that's okay. my question too. I think to play on that, that's my biggest thing. That really is once I get going, I'm fine. I think this movie, but I've had like I've had a young couple. I'm no kidding. So I've got two two buyers right now, two sets of buyers that are about the same price point, like one seventy five. Okay. They, this younger couple that I've had. I'm, been working with them for two months. I bet I've shown 25 houses all around the hilltop because she is on the intro row and it's like, this has been, you know, all the blitz, right? This looks amazing. And then they get down and see the neighborhood and they're like, mm -hmm. uh, I've got a band full of expensive equipment and tools. I can't put my car down here. Like, we will be able to drive by the house. Have you taken them to the hilltop a lot of times? I mean, it's in the same area they keep oh, going back to. Yeah. Okay, so what do you say to them? Well, I don't want to, I'm very careful about like, this is not your area because I don't want to get into the theory. Okay, I have to ask you a question. How many homes have you shown? Okay. How much time does that take? A lot. Because I live in Newark, so it's a lot of time for me. <laughs> I'll tell you what. But the they have they, Their last words to me were, well, they found their perfect house and it was a beautiful house. That house was listed at $199. He didn't want to spend a dime over $170. And he said, can we, it was uh, 189. He said, can we go 190? And I just want to tell no. There's a time when you have to fire up, you fire yourself from your client. Mm -hmm. There were days it just went away. They are not, not responding. They're not looking at the words and that anymore, nothing. So that, like, I've been working for you for two months and you're falling away because the last thing they said to me was, she's got a job in Dublin, so we want to look at how you're in Dublin. And I'm like, you can't even get an apartment until you're in a place for your price range. It's, it, sadly, it's not the time for everybody to buy. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard, that's a hard thing to tell some people. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Sorry, I didn't know you guys didn't have these. I apologize. That's right. And then I, I, the other buyers that I've been working with for a couple months, but they're in the same they price for range. range. They're looking on the other side of town, but it's not so much a big complaint house. It's that the market is very competitive at that price range. Mm -hmm. And they're also like, I'm not going to pay one nine over this. Well, if you don't want to pay one nine over that, we're going to have to drop the price point that you're looking for in the house because yes. you're not coming over. <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's tough. It's been a struggle. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, are you okay with this one? Yeah, no. You can. Okay. Here comes somebody. I might. Can I open it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're all right. Who else? You're all right. I would say. What, who else has a question? Something you're struggling with with a buyer? Not for sure what to do. I mean, for me, I have had buyer clients. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, don't know what I don't know. Yep. So, uh, but I have a good mentor who's going to teach me. So. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so okay. I don't have a huge question right now because it's yeah, it's that thing where you just don't know. Yep. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. No, it was just more feedback and um, what they said to the market right now. Keisha, do you have something that you want me to make sure I cover? Uh, no, we're good. Okay. All right. We're just waiting on copies. Sorry. Like I said, you guys can put this, you can put anything like this together. When you get your pages, it's going to show you um, the Keller Williams version basically of this. Mm -hmm. So then borrow and steal from others, put together what's comfortable for you. Um, but you can definitely build something right from this, okay? If I had enough of these, I would give each of you one of these, but we don't, we're, I think I have two right now. That's all okay. I have. Um, Kathy does a really nice job on everything she does. You can get sponsors if you wanna do something fancy. You've got your brand. He was an individual agent. Mm -hmm. Go out, go visit a title company. Go visit um, your lenders. Go meet with like three lenders. Mm -hmm. What lender do you want to work with? Who do you want to refer? Tell them you're new. You want, mm -hmm. you need a little help. They're going to get business from you. I mean, Kathy's got someone here um, that can help you pay for some of this, but it doesn't have to be this fancy. You know, when you're getting started, you're just coming from contribution and you're giving them information. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with this part. She's going to be good. So I just sit down with them and I just say, hey, you know, thank you for coming in. You know, I'm very excited. I would love to have the honor of working for you. I would love to earn your trust. I would love to represent you. Um, I'm part of the Kathy Cairo group. This is our team. Um, this is Kathy, Brandon, and Shirley. These are our admins. If you're an individual, you don't have admins. However, you have you do have admins because you have the entire Keller Williams. You know, you each have a mentor. Same thing. Um, myself, Cindy, Jill, Sierra, and Carol and Caitlin. This is an old book. Are not on here. Um, so this is our team. Um, I personally like the team approach, just because in my absence. If I'm sick or vacation or whatever, I have somebody to fall back on. You guys all have that too. You all started at the same time. You can back each other up on vacation, mentee to mentee. You know, you can do that. I also think it's great because we only have a couple months of experience. It like it's you have the experience of the team, not just yes, because when, when I was like in jewelry, I could be like. I have this much experience, but now it's like well, I got this much experience. Mm -hmm. Here, can I trade you just because I did that front desk book back book? This is theirs. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, I was so impressed with you. I know, I'm sorry. And then I just, <laughs> took, it. I just took it. I stole it from her. Okay, so they're in, and I thank them. I'm always making small conversation with them. You're going to be a little nervous, but it's okay. Don't let it show. Just take a deep breath. It's fine. Um, to start talking to them. So then I just tell them, you know what, buying a home is exciting, it's nervous, it's scary, but I'm here to help you. We'll be meeting today because I want to go over the entire buying process. I want you to feel educated so you're not nervous when we get to actually go out and have fun and look at the home. Does that sound good to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I explained to you who the team is. And Home Buyer's Guide, I just basically said in a nutshell, it says, Congratulations, this is a big step. You're going to be buying a home. You know, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be excited. All that is normal. And make a joke with them. You know, are you excited? You think you're more excited? Are you nervous? Or make talk with them. Make them feel comfortable. Okay. And then I go right into why do you need a realtor? Why do they need a realtor, guys? I'm your buyer. Why do I need a realtor? Because they need somebody to advocate for them. Okay, that's great. You need a professional who understands the process. So yeah. Just like you go in. Give somebody money. Yep. You have to have a coordinator. Yep. How do they get the MLS listings? Yep. Oh, me, realtor. You're going to set up a search for them. Okay. Okay. They need a realtor. Um, this goes on then to talk about why they have the Cairo group. So do a spin off of yourself, your individual self. Okay. Why do you need a realtor? You need a professional. And especially in our market, you need a realtor who knows the current times how crazy it is, and how we can actually help you win in that. Um, this says about the Kathy Cairo group. Here's what we offer. This is who we are. This is Kathy's phrase. Um, if it's not true, we don't say it. If it's not fair, we don't do it. If it's not right, we walk away. 
That is our T, period. Come up with your own slogan. Come up with something. What, what are you? What is whatever you've named your brand? What are you? Put it together on a page. Okay. Then the next page just describes our team. If you don't have a team, you put yourself. Use some of the stats that Andrea puts out. Yeah. Dayla, Andrea, there are, and Megan and Rachel, they are your, they're your staff. They're part of your team. So use yeah. that. You don't have to have pictures. You can. Okay. Okay. Buyer's loyalty agreement. It's the next page in our buyer's book. I don't go over it a lot right when I get to this page in our buyer's book. I wish it was at the end. If you put a book together, definitely put this buyer's loyalty book or page in your book. Put it towards the end. This is an awkward place for it. Okay. I just say buyer's loyalty agreement. This is something that I'm going to go over with you towards the end because I do not like where it's at. Put it at the end. But I'm going to cover it now so I don't forget. Buyer's loyalty agreement is just this. Once I've gone over this entire book with them and I've explained to them why they want me to represent them, I am very straightforward and I ask them. I, I have a client that uh, I was interviewing one time to um, become her realtor. And I said at the end, I said, I hope I've provided you wonderful information. I would love to work with you. I would be honored. I would love to be your person. And she started giggling and she goes, oh, you're my person. You were my person when I sat down. I could tell. So I've, I've made a joke out of it. When I meet with people now, I say, you know, I met with a client one, or a person once and they were looking for a realtor and they said, you're my person. So that's like a slogan that I have taken and brought forward. So find yours, use it. So what I say to them is, this is a buyer's loyalty agreement. And the reason I'm asking you, I'm presenting this to you is, I am asking for your commitment. I am going to work for you 110%. I'm going to be your realtor. I'm going to be your advocate. I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to work for you. I can help you with anything I set up in MLS. I can help you with anything you find on Zillow or for sales signs as you're out driving around. Take a screenshot of the phone number, send it to me. I can help you with that or a new bill. I can represent you in any of those and I would be happy to. What I'm requesting from you is, I take my job very, very seriously. I'm going to, you know, I always say, I'm going to give you 110% service. I expect the same for you. And I look them straight in the face. And I say, I expect that same loyalty from you. I'm going to give you my best effort. I expect the same from you. So if you're out driving and you see a for sale by owner, or you see a new build or whatever, I, I, can, I will be your person. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking for that loyalty. And if you explain it that way to them, have them sign it. When they decide to hire you, get this buyer's loyalty agreement done. Fill it out. And I'll um, I'll pass this around. And we can actually make, I think there's something a little bit different. I looked through this morning quickly in there. It's just real, I don't know. We'll make copies of this and you guys can have this. And you don't do it in Dapu, you do it in hard copy. Of my buyer's loyalty. Um, if I'm not meeting with them in person, I'll do it in, I'll do double. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But if I'm doing a buy buyer's consultation meeting with them, I'll get it right then. I, I want them right then. Unless they know for sure they want to meet with one more person. If I didn't quite see the deal, then I'll say, you know what? You mentioned you wanted to interview one more realtor. That's fine. I, I respect that. I, I appreciate that. When are you meeting with them? I will follow up with you after that. And then I'm going to get the sign. Okay. So we'll put this buyer's loyalty in the interview. Then I'm going to get it. Yeah. Then I'll get the sign. Okay. So that's buyer's loyalty. Don't be afraid to get it. You're, you deserve their, you deserve their respect. Get this signed. What if they don't want to sign that? If they don't want to sign them, just ask them. You know, I, I can tell by the look on your face, you're a little bop, you're a little trouble to take back and you don't want to sign this. Can you tell me why? Have you had that experience with a realtor? See what the see what the reasoning is and then figure out how to overcome it. If maybe they need a day to think about it, that's okay. That's okay. If they're gonna interview another realtor, that's okay. Let them do it. But then follow up. Because this is my thing. I, I, like I said, I had a few transactions. I presented that to a buyer. And she didn't want to sign it. Now we closed. I stayed a realtor, still work with her. After that, I never asked anybody else to do it. It made you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. 
and I can see that. Um, she probably had a bad experience from a realtor, or maybe maybe she knew she liked it but wasn't a hundred percent or something. So if you can feel when you're having that buyer's thought and you're making them feel uncomfortable by this, just say, you know what, you don't have to sign this right now. Or, you know, are you planning on meeting with other realtors? Are you interviewing someone else for a job? I respect that. Ask them if you can get back with them. If you, this is something, don't use it as salesy, mm -hmm. but this is going to protect you. Does that make sense? Yes, they can, you can be fired every time. Your mm -hmm. clients can fire you. Yeah. But so, like, that doing. being first, mm -hmm. like, kind of softens. If you, if you yeah. actually make sure that they're taking the time to read it, then it softens that because mm -hmm. that's their potential client responsibility. Even if there's a transaction involving you with somebody else, they can't. You can't say anything right. at all. So I feel like that's really well written. She's she's an expert. She is serious. She is great. She is amazing. Okay, so I explained, but like I said, move this to the end because gain their trust through your whole meeting with them. Okay. Then the next thing in our book, we go on to this financing, and I just say to them, Are you already pre-approved? Have, have you contacted the lender? You are. Um, and who are you pre-approved with? Uh, Bank of America. Bank of America. Did you look into anyone else for free approval? Nope. Um, can I ask why you took Bank of America? I do a lot of banking with them already, so I just figured I'd keep it all in one house. Okay, and I understand that. I respect that. I'm going to throw something out there to you. Being on the listing side and the buying side, if I have a whole bunch of offers that I receive and you're in company, if, our, if we write an offer, I'll find a home that you'd like to buy, and we write an offer, and if I present your offer with your pre approval with Bank of America, and then a local in town lender, say American Eagle or Revolution or listing agents at times will look at their offer stronger than a large, large bank. Do you understand why that would be? No. Okay. Does anybody know why it would be? Because typically, you would think a big bank would be better. Because they don't specialize in mortgages. They don't specialize. Can you get a hold of them? No. No. Right. You ever get to talk to the same person? Are they going to close on time? Yeah. They don't close on time. Nine times out of ten, they don't close on time. So when you get a situation where someone's pre-approved, I just say to them, you know, maybe they have a friend that's there. Normally, it's they do all their friends there. Yeah. And I just say to them, okay, I understand you're pre-approved, and that's wonderful. However, would you be interested in just comparing with another lender to see if their rates are the same or better? And perhaps I think I can do you better service by giving you a contract if I have a free approval from a local lender. Would you be willing to look into that for me? Oh, sure. I also oh, believe that too that like after a certain period of time on your mortgage, it gets sold anyway. It does. So it doesn't really matter who's servicing it up front other than to get you into contract on the house. That's exactly right. And if you're working with a big bank, that doesn't do any good for anybody because if you're calling, I have a client that wanted to go to Chase so bad. And I was like, no, I'm not dealing with Chase. Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, I said that in a nice way, but like, I told them, like, it doesn't really matter who you're servicing it to because in two, three months after that probationary period, you're going to get a letter saying you're not making your payments to this person. And it's just Jenny May. Mm -hmm. So it's, it gets sold anyway. So, like, that's something that, like, if you can find a way to word that or work that in, it kind of helps them understand. Also, the mortgage process, because even the best lenders don't really explain that to people. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Yeah. That's very true. Hold on. I have to send this off really, really quick. Oh, she's going to cry. Okay, so does everybody understand why you want, um, you prefer your clients to have a local lender? Does that make sense to everybody yeah. on how you can? Okay, okay, so you're pre-approved. If they're not pre-approved, you just want to explain to them. We always, open. Oh, you. Um, you always want to explain to them too. Now the lending side is always going to do this, but you want to do it also. Another thing, please remember, you're a realtor, okay? 
You're not a lender. You're not the home inspector. You're not the title company. Everybody has their lane. You stay in your lane, okay? You can't talk to them. You can work together with them, but do not give your clients lending advice or talking rates and stuff. I don't know. That's not my job, right? Find a good lender. Find a couple of good lenders you want to work with. Title companies. Let them do their job. You've got enough to do, okay? Um, the do's and don'ts. Always let them know. Say, you know, your lender is going to go over this, but I just want to reaffirm it with you. You know, the obvious things. Don't quit your job. You know, don't open a new secured credit. Don't go buy a new car. Don't do all those kind of things. Make sure you do do. And uh, pay all your bills on time. You know, um, do contact your both your lender or realtor anytime a question arises. Make sure that you find lenders. Go and meet with a couple of different lenders. Find the ones that you like, that you want to work with. My lenders that I use, I can text them or call them anytime, day or night, doesn't matter, weekend. That's what you need. You want somebody, have a couple, that we say in school, three. You're always going to have your favorites. Yeah. You can refer three, but you can nicely point or something <laughs> to your favorites. But no ones that you can reach out to, okay? And you want to make sure your clients are serviced right with the lender that you pick, okay? Um, make sure that whatever lender you pick, your client can call or text them too and ask them, how much is this payment going to be? You know, what is this? What is that? Is there a appraisal gap? You know, what can I do? Make sure your lenders are good that way. So interview them. Um, Always, you always want to tell your clients, make sure, like you said, Lucas, make sure your clients tell them. It is really, really important. I'm working really, really hard for you. When you're working with the lender, you have got to provide all the documents necessary for them right when they ask for them. They cannot do their job, then I can't do my job. And then I can't do my job to get you a house. So make sure they know they have to do things on a timely manner, okay? When you have a bid for this buyer's consult, you're just, you are setting the stage for how you want everything handled. okay? There's no questions when you're out busy showing houses, it'll just be a smoother transaction. Our next page is a lender, okay? He's using Bank of America. I would say, okay, here, here are lenders that we've used on our team. And I would pick out a couple, I write one in that I use. Um, and I would say, reach out to one or two, see which lender you like, Compare, check rates, but you want someone you work with. So you're providing them, what are you doing again? Contribution, you're providing them your lenders. So have your list of lenders, okay? Now, this is a very important page, and this is in that pamphlet. The buying process. The majority of people you're going to work with, they've never bought a home before. They don't have a clue what's going to happen. They're, they're nervous, they're excited. So go through this with them. Okay, and this is where I always say, I'll be, I'll be your person. Um, right at the top, select a real estate agent. And I say to them, you want a realtor that you know is gonna be in your corner, they're gonna work for you, they're gonna fight hard for you. And I always say, when I present my offer, I want my offer to have the largest big red bow on it, that like my listing I have, there's 10 offers. So what am I looking for? I'm looking for the best written offer that there possibly is. So you wanna let your client know you're going to be that realtor for them. They want to hire you, okay? So they're going to select a realtor, and then you're going to say, the next thing you're going to do is, and if that's when she said, well, you're my person. I did a check, check. So she put a check in her book. Have a copy for them. Whatever you guys make, you have one, they have one. So they can write it. Um, and then you say, you want to make sure you have um, your financing, your proof. You good? Yeah. Okay. Um, so if they already have pre-approval, tell them to check it out, okay? The next thing they're going to do is you're, we're going to uh, analyze your needs during your consultation. You say, that's how we're meeting today. And then I pull out a piece of paper, and they have one in there that's really good to use. And you just ask them. You say, you know what? I'm going to set up a search for you in the MLS. I won't make it active until I know how much you're pre-approved for. Another hint is when you're setting up someone's pre-approval, if they're approved for 275, don't put their max to 275 because are they going to get it? <laughs> if it's listed at 275, no, you just show them a house that they can't get unless, unless a home has been on the market 
for say six days or more, then maybe, okay? So keep that in mind. If they're approved for like 275, set their search for 265, 265 which I would, and tell them why you're doing it, okay? So you wanna find out from them, you know, what are you looking for? Do you have specific school districts you're looking for or at certain counties? Do you want land? Do you want in the city? Are you, how many bedrooms, how many bath? Do you have to have a basement? Do you need a garage? Yeah. Um, those kind of things. Does everybody know how to set up a search? Craig, mm -hmm. do you? Okay, I think, do you know how to set up a search? Yeah. Jill will do, so I'll do that with you on one on this day. Okay, really, really important. And in this buyer's meeting, pull up the MLS and show them exactly what they're talking about, how many homes are on the market. They're going to see how few of homes there are and make sure when you're pulling it up, you do the active and everything that's in some sort of contingency so they see how quick they go. Mm -hmm. Also, when I set up my searches in the MLS, I send them not just the active homes, I send them the active and all contingencies because I want them to see how quickly things go and you better, if you want it, you better get it. Okay, so remember that. Do they ask you about the ones that are in contingency a lot? I explain to them in here when I'm setting up their search, I'll say, now I'm going to put you the search. You're going to see homes that are active and you're going to see ones that are contingent. And there are different types of contingencies. Nine times out of 10, I'm not going to take you to show you a home that is contingent unless I see it's a contingency where I know you can get in. Um, so look at them, know them, but know the likelihood it's not going to happen, okay? Um, also, when you're setting up your searches, keep them broad. Don't keep them. Like if they say, um, I want a home and it needs to be 1,500 square feet. It, 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 it just cannot be any smaller. Set it a little bit less or a little bit higher because what's going to happen, they're searching Zillow and they call you and they say, well, this house is on Zillow and you didn't send it to me. And then you need to look look at their search criteria and say, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. You didn't receive that because you asked me to set up your search with these parameters. I can loosen those for you. So let them know. Keep your searches broad. It's better that they receive too much than too little. Okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take that long to scroll through them. They can scroll through and not look at the ones they don't want to. Okay. Um, then when they so we set up the search and then I explain to them, then the next step that we're going to do is select properties. Okay. So when I take my buyers out to show them properties, I always have my MLS sheet and I have their MLS sheet. Okay. I always have one for both. I highlight things that are important on there. How many square footage? How much of a taxes? Um, any um, special remarks in there? I want to know that. When I take them in the home, I tell them this in my buyer's meeting too. I may find a home fund that you're already gonna have enough turbulence and bumpiness. I'm gonna make it fun. We're gonna hit some bumps, but I'll make this as fun as I can for you. I'm a huge Chip and Joanna Gaines fan. My husband and I flip homes. Um, so when I take them out, I tell them, and I tell them write this in the meeting. When I take you out to show a home, you'll have a form, I'll have a form in the list. When we go to see a home, I'm gonna ask you to name it. Every single home we go to, give it a name. Why am I doing that? Anybody know? So that it makes it personalized. So personalized. So they can keep them separate. Right. right. You're just, if you see four or five homes, so I'll say, you know, what would you call this home? They'll be like, well, that's the red brick home. Cool. And then I say to them, I'll write it on there. And then I make them rate every home we go to. It's either a one, two, or three. One, I open the door. This is it. This is my house. I love it. I want it. What do I have to do? Okay. A two, it's okay. With a little bit of changes, this can be my house or a three. And make sure they know in your meeting that if it's a three, they don't even have to go inside. Mm -hmm. Why waste your time? Why waste their time? Mm -hmm. So make it fun. And their kids will get involved too. They'll be like, well, why would you name it? It's just fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. So make that, that process fun. Mm -hmm. So that's selecting properties. Um, no, you have a maximum that you'll go to show. In with, it, with, with that, I feel like. So we have like a max of three because we don't have a system like that. That makes perfect sense because then you can go see, you know. I more, try but not to good. show people. I try not to show people more than probably four, four or five a day because okay. they're confused. They yeah, exactly. So like that's why, but with that, it would help keep them separate.
stuff for more, so you get that. And it's fun. And it is. I have a blast when I'm drawing on stuff. Oh, I do too. I love it. So I love it. I love it. I kind of. I feel like maybe we should take that. You gotta go? Okay. Nice to meet you. Um, I love the song. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I have to do more of these for my first. Well, good. Well, we'll see. He's got a little emergency. That's okay. I hope everything's okay. Yeah, we'll be one of these. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so make viewing properties fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't just open the door and just stand there. Well, mm -hmm. home. Yeah. And always tell your client too. When we pull up to the property, you pull in the driveway. I want to pull in the driveway. I pull up next to the house. Let them pull in so if they can visualize themselves. This is going to be their home. Okay, you can park on the street and walk. Yeah. But when you get inside the pool, walk through it with them. You know, when I walk through, and maybe it's because I grew, grew up, my parents flipped homes and stuff, but I'm always looking. You know, I'm, I'm looking at ceilings and I'm looking for things. You know, listen to what they have to say. Remember, every buyer's different. Everybody wants something different. Everybody needs something different. Mm -hmm. Do you have like five things you etiquette? Like, so sometimes when I'm like, they're showing it on my purse when I'm, when I'm watching on the phone, I'm like, I know I have to get my phone on my purse and I know I have to give you that on my purse. I'm like, shut Like, my, my organization is very extreme <laughs> tailoring. I grab a fire. I grab a, and I switch it out because once I, once I get home, then if it just is a no, then it just goes in file 13. But if they're like, <laughs> there might be order, you know, interested in this, I make those individuals a folder and all that information oh. then goes in the folder. Okay. But I just grab okay. the Williams folder. Okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. So every buyer, I have. you keep your things organized. Okay. So every buyer, this is a seller, but every buyer I have or seller, I have a folder. Okay. And I keep everything, honestly, every house that I've shown them, I make notes on there. Sorry, I'm right. I scribble on everything. His um, MLS, this is, his, I sold this house to him right when I first got my license, actually. And this is the listing that I, the one of the most current listings, listings I have. But this is the MLS sheet I have on it. And I would just, I have their folder. I have all their information on here. So I'm going to this one out. Sorry about that. Um, but these are free. These are back there in the drawer. Oh, yeah. Grab a whole bunch of these. Yeah. Where? And then we just They're have all their second drawer. All the houses. Do Everything. Know? Now, do you write the names down so you can when you're? Yes, I do. And a lot of times when I do my Facebook posts, uh -huh. I haven't done that as much lately. But I'll say, you know, I'll put a cute story about them, and I'll say something about. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make it fun. Yeah. Okay. Make it fun. Make it fun. But I, like you said, I don't, you don't have to. I attach all the houses I show to them on here. I sometimes they get a little thick, the one client did. But I put them on there just because sometimes I'm curious. Like, what price point? Where were they at? Why did they want to offer on this one? Yeah, we didn't get it, but why? But yeah, each buyer or seller should have a folder. Yeah. And then you keep these in your office or wherever you need this stuff. And everything pertains to this client. You have, I do have those for my client, but I like the outside of that. Now, depending on how many things them. you have going on in any one of those accordion folders, yeah. if you're going out showing, that's easy yes. to just throw in the bag. It and is. And do that, and then you have everything all at once. Yep. And that's the whole information sheet I was talking about in the mm -hmm. So it just has, you just you want to give as much information as you can. But like Joe was talking about the partial stuff yesterday, and I did this listing, my comps. Yeah. But these are back here and they're free. And by the you're going to go. Where did you say they're working? I think they're in the second drawer oh, by the copy. Uh, title companies, I don't know who you guys are. We use Northwest. Or we use Northwest. Use, yeah, Northwest is amazing. Northwest or Talon. They're both great. They always get everything done. And we're all like this. Yes. Yeah. We use both. I like Um, so you're viewing properties, okay? Um, when it's time to write an offer, has everybody written an offer? You write yes. offers, offers, offers. Lucas? Yes. Craig, you have it, but that's okay. I can do yours. We'll do yours together. Keisha, I know you haven't either. I'll do yours with you. Okay. Okay. Are you learning something? I sure am. I'm writing and taking notes too. Good. Okay. This is my pet peeve on offers. Mm -hmm. This page, actually all pages, but this one right here, yes. fill it out. This page right here, fill oh, it out, out. Mm -hmm. fill it out, man. 
Okay, so my listing, I have 10 offers, right? What do you think one of the other than price? What do you think one of the things I do if I looked at? What the realtor do? Okay, so this side over here is the um, sellers, the buyer side, and the broker side, the seller side. Yeah, buyers here. You're going to fill all this out when you submit an offer. I'll make sure you do. Uh, on the seller side, when you're getting offers in and they don't put anything down here, what's not the first thing that tells you about them? They're incompetent. Are they gonna are they gonna call me back? Are they gonna follow through on everything? No. no. What's the likelihood that we actually fill that out? So that's a girl to the point one time that my team and I would give us a coaching for one of my uh, team that I'm helping. Because you want to think about it too, like we're sending an offer for don't put your client's information. At the top, more than the main. Yes. No. So I heard an, uh, Just a listing five. agent say that one time about the thing, and I have always filled it out ever since. But yeah, not the phone number, yeah. not the address, no. none of that stuff. It's, it's like all this stuff down here, all the stuff at the bottom. Yes, yeah, the bottom stuff. Okay, so sorry, that's just a fact. Okay, so everybody's written an offer. Greg and Keisha have it, but that's okay. We're going to do that together on one of our zooms. Um, negotiating terms. How's everybody? In this market, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I how much cash do you have to bring to the table, and how can we work on it? Right. What were you gonna say? Mm -hmm. Negotiate. You have written offers before, right? And have you? Has there two all sports offers? I've had a, I've had a contract accepted before. Good. Uh, but it was a backup offer. That's all right. Because the because the clients were not pushing on the document. I think that we could have won. You just made me think of something. Okay, you're the buyer's agent, right? You're out showing the house. Your house, your client loves it. What are you doing as you're backing out of the driveway of that house? What are you doing? Oh, Very good. Why? Because you want to go over the floor. Yes. Everybody heard what she said? Mm -hmm. she, you're, when you're backing out of that driveway, hey, this is Mary Black, so I'm so ready to create a promise. You did not uh, me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah I probably did. did. You know me. <laughs> um, I just showed your property at. Do you currently have any offers? They say yes, no. Oh, okay. What in particular is your seller looking for? What am I trying to find out? Win. How to win? How to win? How to win? Do they need to Yeah. Is there anything in particular that your client would like? What's going to make our offer stronger? Right. Right. A great agent is going to answer those questions. But if you're backing out and you don't pick up the phone and you don't call that listing agent, and you're not building rapport, you're not working hard for your client. You're just not. And then you just keep in the text them. You want to form a relationship. I've even, yeah, I've even wrote like seven emails. Heck yeah! <laughs> Heck yeah! Oh, yeah. They're on this, on this, on the listing I had, there's like three of the listing agents that really wrote some pretty cool things. You know, I mean, it's up to the seller, but. So, how do you deal with the listing with Mike? Michael, um, uh, Mike and Michael. I've already put in a few <laughs> offers for them that they didn't get, but are they writing good offers? Do you feel like they're very not competitive? Okay, so enough. Okay, so hold that up for one second. In your buyer's consultation meeting, as Lucas, she mentioned something, and Kathy, Kathy does this, and I think it's pretty cool. She'll ask people, Have you bought a car recently? No. What have you purchased recently? A couch. How long did it take you to decide what couch you want? Why is she asking? Probably not going to her to decide on house. Yeah, she's trying to figure out how decisive they are. Right. Um, and if they say, oh, I went through a touch road 10 or 12 cores, and then I had to talk to my aunt and my uncle, whatever, you know what? In your buyer's consultation, you know what you say to them? I'm just being honest with you. This is our market right now. And honestly, this may or this really may not be the time for you to look at all. Mm -hmm. Homes that are all, if you're not willing to make a decision quickly, I'm sorry, this is not the time. Now, what I can do is I can advise you to look at homes that have been in the market for six or seven days, the likelihood you'll have a better chance, but you might you need to tell them the truth right up front, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Why set their expect if, if you know that they're not going to be aggressive enough you're just spending time and money running around showing them houses there's no need to even do it 
I think some of the some of the reservations with me on the plan is that I feel it's been too to find some time to clear. Um, and it's just been very um, almost like an engineer. Um, C type personality, mm -hmm. high C, mm -hmm. and that makes them so decisive on what they don't want rather than what they do want. And I think that some of it's just I have, have to really know your personality. You do. You yeah. do. Yeah. That's, you learn so much in this meeting. So yes. much in this meeting. Face to face. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. much. So much. Go ahead. So, so um, no, no, no. So, all kinds of information. Um, so, I, I mean, it was the second house we put in an offer. I called the agent, just like you're just like you're talking about, like they're really interested in thinking on putting on an offer, you know. But the response I got from this listing agent was, "Could you go to offer?" No, it was almost like, "Okay, what are you calling me for?" You know what? That's not a good agent. Almost no. that kind of attitude, you know. Let it go. Who cares? Like, yeah. You don't want to be that person. That's a painful conversation. Like I'm yes. pulling information. Yeah. And the thing I think about it is, what I learned with that too is like if my buyer is not dead set on it, and I get a response like that from a listing agent, I already know in my mind that this probably isn't the one anyway. Because it's if it's that hard to go off yeah. someone, yeah, no. right, no. right. That's just not a good agent. It's not a good agent, yeah. You just you have to feel sorry for the people they work with. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. Not to be mean, but yeah, it's really sad because I could get anybody with a brand new Yeah, I, I mean, like, I'm not I'm insulting not, anyone no, in here. All of you are learning, we're all of you doing what we're supposed to do, right. but like, you'd be surprised. Oh. Right. My my oldest son is a loan officer, right? Okay. And he says that some of the stuff he says to me that realtors do. Oh, <laughs> what? And yeah. he's like, Mom, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there are a lot of really not very smart realtors. Yeah. yeah. Um, yes. And yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. Pass that test. <laughs> the amount of realtors that take people out without pre-approval and will even get them in contract, and oh, then goodness. they'll even. This is all perfect. I get them in contract. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm bad this yeah. Right. Get them in contract, and then they'll get, so they'll come into the office on Monday morning, and they'll get these purchase contracts. They're, by, they're in contract. They haven't even pre-approved them yet. Listing the buyer's agent doesn't even know if they can buy. Put them in contract, and then better yet, there's appraisal gap money in there. And the one agent said to him, he said, he goes, you put a great appraisal get money in there just looking at their pre approval. There's no way that they have additional funds. He goes, I've never had to use appraisal gap money, they won't have to do so. Oh. Don't worry about it. Oh. Huh. No, I mean, don't worry about it. He's like, You can't do that. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. No, what is one appraisal gap money gonna go away though? I don't know. This it sucks. It's it does suck. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. horrible. Well, I mean, that's like you gotta be honest at your buyer's meeting too, and you gotta yeah. ask them how much cash are you comfortable bringing to the table as of you know 30 days from now. And if they say 10,000, I'm saying okay, so we're gonna go with eight because we don't want to make you uncomfortable. So like that's always like a good rapport building thing too. Is like max with everybody else's help, how much can you bring? Right. And then if they say you know however much, you take it down by 20 percent. You say okay, we save that 20. And then you write the offer completely according to that. I started doing it reverse. I started writing the offers and then adding it up and saying, okay, potentially max, this is how much you're bringing to the table. And then you're like, oh, no, I don't have it. You're like, okay, let's rework it. And then at the beginning, if you start that at the beginning and you establish like what they're comfortable with, you know, as far as cash wise, because yeah. they can't come with nothing. I don't know why it is people think that they can buy a house with no zero. Oh, I had a client that actually got to do that once. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my mom. Oh, my I think VA should be VA. VA. Yeah, I think maybe that's what's on VA. They have, they have government assistance for USDA. Yeah, oh, USDA. Yeah. USDA. And USDA. they also have they actually got money back down payment because. assistance through the government, too. Oh, right. Down payment assistance will knock that total. We've had the total come down to, you know, 12,000 to 4,000, but you still have to have closing costs or something, mm -hmm. you know? 
not USDA. <laughs> no, no, I, USDA. I only had one client that got that no, one was that close. So like people really, but I've had a number of clients say, I need to have the system. I don't have any money to bring to the table. I'm already paying $1,200. And honestly, this may not be their time. That's not to be mean, but you it's have to be honest with them. They came to see you for yes. a realtor. Be honest with them. Congratulate them that they got free and free if they, they achieved that, because that's a huge goal. You know, a lot of people have high college debt or their credit cards work. They worked hard to get their credit score to where they want. I have like a, a, a buyer that's like so serious about buying the house, and you tell them like you're going to need at least you know probably this much to this much. A lot of people will literally cut their lifestyle that completely to say that. Like, or they'll sell things. things or they'll yeah. sell. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. Yep. They don't. They don't know. They're, they're coming to you for the expert on the real estate. But make sure they know, you know, congratulations on being pre approved. That's such an accomplishment. It is. You know, it are, is. You, are you familiar with the price of that money? And their eyes get huge. Are you, you know, are you praying, you know, uh, familiar with so many different things, waiting the home inspection or mm -hmm. so many? Your buyer's consultation time is a huge, yeah. huge mm -hmm. setting, the, setting the ground. And if, if you're talking about appraisal gap coverage, like, you know, it's also like an easy thing to mention that, like, okay, so they're buying a house for, and the house is listed for 140, and you're offering 150 with the five thousand dollars appraisal gap coverage. Let them know that if that house appraises at 150, you're still only getting out for 145 in the contract because you only have five thousand dollars in appraisal gap coverage. Right. You know what I mean? You're right. safe. you're not going up to the 150. You're just covering what you say that you're going to cover. Mm -hmm. It becomes a lot less daunting when you have notice when you explain it that way. Remind me of cost of living. Um, the next page that in here is in here. We have 88 types of turbulence. Mm -hmm. Make a joke about it. Okay. It's true. You're going to hit some of them, but mm -hmm. I am going. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cute. Uh, you're going to hit some of them, but I'm going to ensure that you hit the least amount of bumps you can. And I'm a problem solver, so I'm going to make sure mm -hmm. to take all these off of you. Stay in contact with your buyer. Can you not hate? I don't even care. It's cute. Mm -hmm. It's cute. It's got turbulence for the buyer borrower, turbulence for the seller, turbulence for the realtor. There's not very many for us, and I don't I don't know why that is, but um the lender, because they're all company buyers. The, lender, the property, the escrow title company, the appraiser, and the inspector. Uh, time to write an offer. All you guys have, except for Craig and Keisha, I'll do that one-on-one -on -one with them. Gonna skip that. Um, 10 ways to win. Um, this was always in our buyer's book, Kathy created. And I have enough of these. I'll give each of you one. Okay. That's you a, have one? That's a buyer's book. This is 10 ways to win. Oh, okay. Kathy actually wrote this. And I always tell people, you know what I'm gonna give you this? Share it with mom, dad, aunt, uncle. They're not gonna like everything they say. And you're not gonna like everything that's in here. I'm not saying we have to use all of them to get you in contract, but it's good to have. Okay. Um, I think they get that out of the new generation. Kathy did. Kathy did. Yeah. yeah. She is, she just is. Um, Are you willing to put the ugly house? Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, be willing to buy the ugly house and make it your own. It's like a ton of money. Um, I talked to him about home inspectors, tell them about that process, explain it to them, and then we have a list. Of all the home inspectors, you can put together your own list. Same thing. Um, then we have a thing that we send also. It's uh, congratulations. Um, what's next? There's a for the buyer side and the seller side. And then this is just all utilities in the area. That's easy information yeah. to get. You can definitely put in here. Um, the closing timeline. Um, this is nice just to have it. Let's them know they can follow along. But really, you're keeping them in touch because you've got everything on there. That is our buyer's book. That's what I go over with every single buyer. Um, I wish I had more to really give you guys all one. But this that they put together is um, is good. Make it your own. But like I said, you're an individual. So um, use documents, use information on the team or on the, the brokerage. Um, yeah, true question. Okay, so you're with the team. Yep. You started out as an individual. I did. Okay. Why did you go through the team? To be honest, I started out as an individual. Um, 
Um, I did an open house for Kathy. Okay. I left a note for the homeowners. I called her right after and I followed up. She reached out to me. Um, I honestly had no intention of joining this. I really didn't. I wanted to be an individual. Um, I'm extremely thankful to be a part of Kathy's team. She's amazing. She's uh, a go-getter. She's giving. She's amazing. Um, I think team is great for some people. I think individual is great for some people. The mentor program that they, they are putting together and they're they're making it even better. And I don't know what it is. Um, they're supposed to have a call tomorrow's the 20th. Yeah. We have a call tomorrow on the 20th about the mentor. They're making at Keller Williams, they're always trying to make things better. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard with like the mentor mentee program, to be honest, because we're so busy, right? Mm -hmm. And trying to connect with the mentees. All your mentees have a different schedule. Mm -hmm. You know, they all kind of have a different pace that they're going. Um, so just really trying to figure out how we can blend and make everything. I guess what I would say is in real estate, you can be successful as an individual or on a team. It doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. Um, I love being on campus. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. And there are a lot of great really reasons. Mm -hmm. There are. Um, but you could be extremely, I mean, you saw the numbers. You know, oh, yeah. You saw the numbers up there mm -hmm. for all the individual agents. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you can be an individual. You can go on a team later. You can go back individual. You can, you can do whatever you want to do. But it's all about. I think sitting out there, mm -hmm. gaining knowledge. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I think you, I don't know, I like this. I think you can clash yourself to death. You're not making money when you're sitting here. You can't. Yeah. Right now. You, can. you gotta get a job. Go. Get out there. Do. Go get buyers. Yeah. Work your Facebook. Work your leads. Do the open houses. That's how you make money. Then it, it, it just starts trickling. You do a good job with one, it spreads to it the next one. It just starts with yeah. your clients who really, really definitely they will. And then, definitely. like, if, if that on your Facebook mm -hmm. and like anything, oh, it is. Time to see that on your Facebook, but they're even thinking about it. And they're like, Shh, she's doing good. And like, maybe you have to call it. Maybe you have to call it. Nope. Okay, so this is something cute. So I have one of my buyers nicknamed me Captain. I don't know why you called me Captain, but I'm going to find. Um, I bought Kappa tickets to the theater, and I mailed, I spent $300 in Kappa tickets, and I mailed out a few little handwritten cards mm -hmm. for my past clients um, and clients that I, listings upcoming I had or buyers that I'm currently searching for. And I just sent them Kappa movie tickets with a little Kappa schedule, and I just put, you know, thank you or different things. Mm -hmm. But this is what he wrote. This is hysterical. He says, hey, Captain, just got your card. Thank you very much. See, you've been busy as usual. Where do you see that at? Social media. Yeah. Um, it's hard to believe summer is coming to an end soon. Don't know where it went. Oh, well, be safe, Captain. And do what you do best. Make people's dreams come true. That's cute. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Mm -hmm. I'll use that on Facebook somehow, some way. Um, no, do you, you don't have to ask for permission to do that. Uh, maybe you should. I always do, and then you can ask for forgiveness. But maybe that's not the right thing to do. But yeah, there's what my clients say. Okay, so if, if you don't have any clients yet, if you're putting this book together, family members or something, write something. Or mentees. Right. Or, yeah, anybody. Have them write something. Put this together. Um, why Keller Williams? Williams? Yeah, even like past supervisors. Yes, anybody. Yeah. Um, here's a page. Why Keller Williams Realty? That's great. What's ahead? Let's look for a home. And then it goes over. This is the exclusive right to represent buyer slash tenant. This to me just looks. This looks like I'm signing a contract. That's why I like that. I'll make copies mm -hmm. of that for you guys. Um, consumer guide. And the purchase contract you've all done make sure you fill in um hopefully don't need a mutual release but you'll know that when you need it the biggest thing is be you really be you um don't be afraid to um make it fun 
You know, somebody that's going to buy a house is already nervous. Mm -hmm. Have a time. Mm -hmm. You know, treat others exactly how you want to be. So I think that's what you have to do. Follow up. Do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Call the listing agent when you're backing out of the driveway. That's key. I had one that they called me. He was so funny. He called, I don't remember his, I can't pronounce his name. He called me and said, Hi, Mary. And I said, Hi. He goes, I'm da da da. I just love Kathy Tyro. I know he says something. <laughs> and I go, What do you do? And he said, Yeah, he goes, I just got done showing your, your listing on Holly Bank. I said, Oh, you did? Because Kathy was seriously, I love Kathy Tyro. She's amazing. Whatever that lady says to do, he's from the Caldwell Banker. <laughs> he says, whatever that lady says to do, I did. Well, I'll talk to her probably once a week. And I said, oh, I said, that's awesome. I said, good for you. And he said, yeah, because am I helping myself? I go, a little bit. <laughs> what was he doing? Networking. Yeah, I just formed a relationship. Mm -hmm. He put together a great offer. He's checked in with me three times today because he knows that um, the offers are open until 8 o'clock. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Wow. So what is he saying? Oh, he's, he's just cute. Let me know if there's anything else I need to do in my office. Let's see if he... Here's a here's a note. Mary, I emailed you a revised offer on Holly Bank. Those are good agents. Mm -hmm. Those are good agents. It's the one that I got this morning. He sent me a text. Where is he? He says, um, Oh, this this is a very good example. This guy texted me this morning. Any updates on the offer? My clients have been anxiously waiting. And I was like, please confirm your name. He didn't say who he was, who he was with, he didn't introduce himself. And then he gives me his name, his client's name. And I said, I did not receive your offer. Can you please email it to me again? Because I want to play like I didn't care. He didn't. Um, and then I said, please text me once you have emailed it. To me again, please. No response. That was at 10 29 this morning. Hmm. You know what, though, they might be waiting on the uh, buyers to. No, sign. no, no. no. He said they already had a phone. Yeah. yeah. And you haven't gotten an offer. Still, I wasn't, I wasn't torn. I was saying, you yeah. still communicate. You know, that was right. Well, and I yeah. had that. I had another guy that reached out to me that was wonderful, but for sure, his clients were going to write, and he said, I'll probably be late. Tuesday night, and I said, no worries, just send it over. You know, it's open until Wednesday at 10 p.m. I said, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. He even sent me back the next morning, and, or no, he sent me back later that night. My clients want to think on it. I'm really sorry. That's not the information I wanted to pass on. I thought I was submitting tonight. I was like, no worries. A good night's sleep is good sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. And then he followed up the next morning and said, you know what? They decided to pass. They want to wait a little bit. I'm like, that's all right. You know? Yeah, I'll yeah, remember that. Right. And I'm like, thank you so much. Best of luck to your buyers and best of luck to you. You know, that's a great agent, you know? Yeah. So, what else you guys got? I hope you guys learned something. Oh, oh, absolutely. I hope so. Hope so. Keisha, did you learn something? I am. You're awesome. Oh, no. <laughs> She's already doing. Huh? She's already doing that buttering. Yeah, she's buttering. <laughs> yeah, good job. Lindy said you're doing good. It's a, we're, any type of business like this, it's relationship building. That's all you're doing. You're building relationships. You know, and and the big thing is, like Kathy, wait, what are all these? Everybody, I see you guys have. Oh, this is a joke. Okay. Okay. This will be fun. Is there more of them? Yeah. There's a whole bunch. Oh, there's one more. Um, um, be yourself, put your own spin on it, create your own buyer's book. Definitely have a buyer's meeting before you take somebody out. Definitely don't take them out until they're pre-approved. You know, have your mentor write your first one or two offers with you. Have them look it over. You know, they can sit side by side. They're gonna make you do it because you gotta learn. And then after that, I you have read right through them. Yeah, and after that, you really do. But still to this day, I have, and the reason I told you yesterday, Craig, on the um on the listing, I have a big folder that's uh when I first started of examples. Yeah. 
And I, I still need to. When it's later in night or whatever, I pull those out and I look through them because there's different counter offers, there's different addendum, language that I want to steal or whatever. I have that all there. So that's why I told you yesterday, go back in and start your, um, you know, some people do it electronically. I'm not a paper, I guess, person. Um, so I hope that was fine. Do you guys have any other questions I can help with? But don't be afraid to ask somebody in the office. Yeah. Ask them, what's your best advice? And like when you're going to a cookout, um, uh, Arnold Desenza said to her, said his name wrong, Arnold. Um, what's Arnold's name? Desenza. Yeah. Desenza, yeah, I felt like I was saying it wrong. Um, I was in a training in here and I asked him, what is your best advice you can give me? I'm brand new. And it was be new. And it was um, when you go, he goes, what are you doing this weekend? I said, we're going to a 50th surprise birthday. He said, perfect. Do you know what you do before you go there? I'm like, not really for sure. What? He's like, you know that area where their home is? Current home sales. Know something about that market. Yeah. So if it comes up, you can talk about it. Yeah, it's great. But everybody you meet has a different tip. Take what they give you and, and make it you. But just be yourself. Be Treat others as you want to be treated and follow up. Contribution. Yeah. It gets you everywhere. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But you guys have anything? Do you guys have anything? No, no, I just want to read your paper. I gotta go with the dog. I didn't have time. Yeah. I don't have time. Sorry. I think I'm good. Um, I'm gonna try to go to Rivers Lodge. What are you gonna do? Go back to Rivers Lodge. Try to get over there. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. We went. On, Let me know. We went on Thursday. And thank you, Keisha. Okay, I don't. Thank know you, Mary. To... Appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, I don't know what to do here to turn this off. Does anybody? Um, <laughs> Keisha's the only one on We're here. Still We're still Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I do. Well, it can't be okay. So okay, so just in the oh stop share. There we go. Oh recording stop. Thank you. You're very welcome. Are you sure you want to stop recording? Mm -hmm.